It's about that time, ladies and gentlemen. Who's trying to talk about the Jedi, the Beanickies, the Forest, Cal Kestis, basically about to become the new Star Killer, basically, by the path of which they're kind of implying in this game? Spoiler warning. When it comes to galaxy wide stuff, there's a lot of force wielders. Not every single one of them died from the devastating Order 66. This one in particular, Cal Kestis, is one of the survivors. His Jedi Master, Jar Paul. He's been living on the run, fighting the Empire. He's grown into a fierce Jedi warrior, and you're going to see how this video goes along. He, he carries memories from his old order, but it seems like his crusade against the Empire is endless. But let's get it. As somebody that doesn't have the force or any type of telekinetic counter, what are you supposed to do against a being that has laser swords and can literally freeze you helpless to where you can't defend yourself? Like, you're literally frozen, choking you at the same time with a laser sword. Like, you think you can distract him because he's riding something? No, you still get force slung. We all can relate to a government, but what about a galaxy-wide government governing over a whole bunch of planets in one galaxy? Since the galaxy is a big place, this universe is filled with high-tech technology to be able to fly from planet to planet, light-speed vehicles, different aliens races and species that communicate with one another different aliens and species that have supernatural abilities like being able to use this thing known as the force the jedi were peacekeepers or one could say some of the mightiest beings in the galaxy because of their strange abilities to manipulate objects with their mind read your thoughts mind trick you and all that good stuff and there was a lot of different adventures that would happen one of the biggest events of all time in the Clone Wars. They even cloned troopers so they can have a lot of military skill. But these troopers ended up turning on the Jedi and did the biggest Batman of all time being basically mind control to turn on the Jedi. It also didn't help that Anakin became Darth Vader during this time. So there was like this big purge where all these clone troopers just randomly shoot the Jedis from behind and they would kill like a lot of them. But fortunately, they did not kill every single Jedi though. A young Padawan youngling with the abilities of the Force is one of them that survived. He escaped, but unfortunately his master did not. For years, he would hide his true nature and just live like basically a normal life for a little while until his buddy Prive got murked by an Inquisitor. It kind of forced him to get out and expose himself again. So he went through this new adventure. And when it comes to raw force power, he's one of those characters that due to being out of practice, he does get rusty in the ways of the force. So he kind of has to relearn certain things that he might have forgotten, but he does improve as time goes by and his adventures. A great example of how he improves as time goes by in the same game, he was constantly getting overpowered by an Inquisitor level being known as the second sister, for example. Example, right but eventually throughout the events of this game learning more with the force and getting better and remembering what he once learned he eventually is able to match her he eventually gets mighty enough to where he can actually get the advantage over her i mean after all these fights with these different inquisitors he had to improve he was getting pushed back here for example then fights her again gets completely overpowered in this occasion as well and barely escapes with his life it literally appears he was about to get speed blitzed if bd didn't save his life in this occasion he fought another inquisitor but in this occasion he actually started getting better and technically gets his first real win against an inquisitor showing that yeah he's definitely improving no matter how you want to slice it matter of fact the finishing blow was actually a force pusher it shows his blast power due to the fact that the old game and the new game there was five years apart aka a time skip one could say he's gotten stronger since the events over here all the way to the events over here because apparently throughout this time all he's been doing is been fighting this is evident when they fight again in the game because he actually takes care of this one inquisitor rolling head taking the life of one he technically defeated her twice because they even admitted in her biography in the game saying he defeated her years ago there's been more than one occasion of him fighting beings that physically have the edge over him but his force abilities help bridge the gap with whatever he does lack like this being that's been around for centuries this being is extremely old for example for cal to be able to hang with him in raw skills that's impressive he's one of those characters thanks to his weird physiology you can cut parts of him off and he still can fight but you guessed it cal eventually made him I even though this guy has centuries worth of fighting experience. One clear implication that he's gotten stronger between these five years is there are points in the game he's legit getting overpowered by other beings that are strong in the force as well, but he makes it seem like they don't even have force powers. Embrace in the darkness, like Palpatine would say. And it's to the point where even other force users can't hardly do anything, even though they have the force and they should be able to counter this movement. He can just kind of straight up handle them, move your guns away, away from me. There's plenty of moments like this in the game where he just implied he's gotten a lot stronger. Battles the second sister Inquisitor yet again. He's a lot more mightier compared to when they first fought. This fight ends up not being concluded. Yo, you guessed it, yet they fight one final time. But this time it's a lot different when it comes to how strong he's gotten. This time it was definitely a clear win this time. Even got her to the ground defeated. 
But let's analyze him deeper. How strong is Kyle Kestis? In the new game, there was this being known as Dagon, who was a force user from back in the day, 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 that he was so good with mind manipulation type stuff when it comes to Jedi mind trick type stuff. He can manipulate even the strongest of minds. But Cal is also strong when he comes to Jedi mind tricks, was able to use these illusions against him, against this being that specialized in mind tricks. That's why you would see certain points of the fight where it looked like he was fighting clones or crap, because it was like some mind trick illusion type stuff. Kyle had to counter against something we see beings or Jedi do in the past like trick your mind when it comes to the mind trick we've seen him do this quite a bit in this game this is one of the few occasions you can do it here to make them open the gate for him if he wants to tricking their mind weak willed beings he can do this too this is wild since he draws from this extra dimensional power known as the force he can jump really high because of this enhancing his other statistics like his physical strength for example beings that are way bigger than him muscle wise he's still able to match physically and push him back if he needs to because of how his body's getting enhanced with the force thanks to the force one could say he has enhanced everything even enhanced physicals to where he can just land like that without breaking any bones it's proven he has superhuman durability falls like this would have killed any ordinary person but he's still able to withstand falls this far without any broken bones or nothing i mean when you have the force who cares about your normal durability because that telekinetic power you lift up stuff with aka the force you can use that to protect yourself like a barrier it's stuff like this that it's implied that cal has gotten so strong he can do that type of stuff with blocking attacks with the force like a parry even though there's implications he has force and hand strength that's not his strong suit when it comes to physicals even though one can imply they're definitely more than normal. There's rare occasions when his back's against the wall where he he can't really reach his lightsaber at the time, so he will go ahead and settle for some elbows or some punches, but then pull out the lightsaber eventually. Just like pretty much every Jedi known to man, he's a swordsman, can use a laser sword known as lightsabers to cut down his foes with fighting skills and stuff of that such when he doesn't want to spam his force ability. He's not afraid to use these lightsabers in different ways either, whether if he wants to use two at once or just one grips. Like just a normal sword type stuff if he wants to he can also do that double bladed bullcrap kind of like how darth maul does and attack you that way when it comes to crowd control these swords help even the odds against big creatures he can even fight an atst to blitz him and cut it down not even purge troopers want none of cow pretty much no droid is safe these temple like mech thingy magics they still ain't ready for cow cutting power size is nothing to jedi no arm for you even though he has telekinesis, let's just say his lightsaber is nothing to scoff at. Look at how he just cut through thick stuff like this with his slicing power, basically. So we know he's a good swordsman, but on top of that, he knows how to use the force. But how much raw power or how much can he lift with this telekinetic ability? For the most part, the stuff they can do with the force, they usually don't do physically with their muscles and stuff. Like blasting them away in the middle of a fight. It helps keep the opponents on their toes and not knowing what the Jedi will do next. Even while young, he can use the force to slow all these soldiers. Even big structures like this, he can freeze. There's like this little tornado crap going on, all this debris. He can simply use the force to freeze all of this all at the same time. Big stuff that will crush you really fast. He can freeze big stuff like this. Even beings like Vader who he's nowhere in the league in, he can pull this bull crap from the wall to try to hit him with it while he's being choked out. Even though Vader counted it, that's still cool as heck. His blast power can blast down walls, big chunks of stone. Even creatures way bigger than him, he can push away. Teaming up on him won't matter because you all will just get blasted away. Gigantic creatures like this, despite it being building size, he can pull it towards him and slam him and attack him that way. Beings like this have to weigh over 10 tons if we're being honest. He's no stranger to using the force on giant creatures along with slicing them up on top of it. I mean, he's even fought Rancors. You know, the same type of stuff we've seen Luke Skywalker fight before. Big stuff like this that he can move, push, and pull with his force. Strength. You remember when Trilla took control of the controls of a ship? That's what Cal Kestis does here, for example, to bring the ship down. Cal Kestis has the blast power to cause all of that collateral. Thick rocks get the heck out of his face. Objects that easily weigh tens or even hundreds of tons, he can move, of course. Look how big this junk is, for example. He can move it with the force. When you compare him to other beings that can use the force, we've seen him win force tug of wars with other powerful beings with the force but it's kind of hard to really tell how strong this guy is he really doesn't have that many showings it helps to be strong in the force because you, when you're strong like Kyle with the force you can counter other people force choking you so you can blow them back overpowering this being with the force is pretty impressive considering what we've seen him do visually in the game when it comes to his blast power messing up this giant thick bridge you can see him like crumbling there was even parts in the fight you see him break the concrete around him when he was about to be trapped so overpowering this dude with the force is crazy look at all that collateral and what they can do 
that entire bridge, the aftermath of their battle doing this to this type of bridge, you know, their blast power. All this evidence definitely suggests he could blast down on multiple buildings down if he wanted to. He has some flashy feats of lifting a lot of weight with the force. Like in this particular occasion, him and Marin both could do it. Like you see in this occasion, Marin helped before he was done. And to give you a perspective of how much weight this was, here's a visual on how much they was holding up. Well, Cal was holding up on his own for a little bit until Marin said, let me help you out. This has to be at least 50 tons or even hundreds or more than hundreds of tons. One of the main villains of the newest game, Dagon, he used the force to bring down stuff on Cal. He was able to counter. This has to be at least hundreds of tons. And he's holding it with his strength while blocking lightsaber hits. You can actually see him toss it away here to show his power. He's one of those beings that's not afraid to lift you up to even push you off the ground like that. He's not afraid to lift up boulders and crush the boulder on you while in the middle of a fight. Like on some Kylo Ren type stuff. And deflect blaster bolts from every angle if he wishes. There's no surprise since he's a Jedi, he has fighting speed. Fighting speed to the point even when he's caught off guard, he can reflect attacks back at you to make it miss on purpose as a warning hit when it comes to his fighting speed. Deflecting blaster bolts like that. Yeah, one can say Jedi has their own form of spider sense. Even surprise attacks like this, he can dodge and take your gun out the way. Yeah, reflexes are sharp. Don't pull out a gun on him because even if he doesn't have his lightsaber, he can just move the gun out of your way and just pull out his own gun. Even when we're talking about aircrafts, he can deflect it with his fighting speed when it comes to them shooting at him. His fighting speed is so impressive, even when he's outnumbered by multiple stormtroopers blasting him, he can reflect it. He can enhance his raw movement speed with the force to basically move like a blur if he has to. When all of this debris is moving around, it is impressive freezing all of this, but this is not even the best way to understand his raw force ability. The best way to understand how strong he is is to understand where he is in the power hierarchy when it comes to the raw force power force users. For example, it's pretty obvious Darth Vader and Darth Sidious are pretty much at the top of the food chain, with Ahsoka being pretty high in her own right, but not quite there yet, but still ridiculously high. I would say this is where Cal ranks around the Inquisitor level, maybe not necessarily equal to the, the Grand Inquisitor, but somewhere in that range. Being similar to this Jedi from Rebels that was decently strong in the Force. For example, there's a lot of Inquisitors, but not all of the Inquisitors are made equally. But when it comes to the hierarchy, they're definitely below Sith Lord level. We kind of know that Cal is definitely Inquisitor tier. You're probably thinking, what does all of this have to do with Cal? Well, to get a good idea of his power is to get an idea of his opponent's power that he can match. Like, it's cool and all, he can freeze hundreds of tons of debris, but that seems like that's low tier when it comes to what Inquisitors and stuff can do, though. So this isn't a good representation of his max. Because if he's anywhere in the league with Kanan Jars or Ezra Bridger, I don't see why Cal couldn't do a similar feat like these two are doing with the Force, being able to lift up this temple and twist it upwards, this big old mechanism. I see no reason on why Cal Kestis couldn't do this with the Force as well. And this structure looks like a very big mountain-sized-esque building-sized structure. Which has to be over thousands of tons. Yeah. Yeah, this is definitely mountain size. This kind of confirms he can lift or blast with thousands of tons of force. This is still nothing compared to stuff with that Vader's done and stuff. But yeah, just to give you a benchmark. Like guys, I know they used the force together and it was two people. But guys, this has to weigh over hundreds of thousands of tons. Temples like this. I don't see why Cal couldn't do this as well, meaning he can lift over hundreds of thousands of tons if he really had to, technically. There's a part of me that believes that with the Force, if they really just put their concentration through it, Cal Kestis and some of the top tier people of this game can move house-sized things like this big bullcrap mechanism they had to deal with. I already showed this occasion of him slicing a chunk of his arm and stuff, but this thing is massive. Obviously, something like this doesn't exist in real life, so there's not like we can like Google what this would weigh, but it's massive. I mean, look how big these rocks are, and it's even bigger than that stuff. Keep in mind, in this current angle, Kyle Kestis is nowhere near this thing, and it's this big. I mean, just look at one of its limbs. Here's another angle of how big it looks. Of course, there was like this witch person working with Kyle, his buddy Marin, who's a witchy force user type character, magic is type magician type character. They worked together, and it appears when they was able to work together, they was able to help blast something that lo looks like it weighs either thousands of tons or possibly 50,000 tons, hundreds of thousands of tons. Working together, they could blast it away from them by using the debris to jam it up and stuff of that such, break it apart like that with his blast power. And just to give you guys more of a visual perspective, I literally went in photo mode for you guys so you can see how big this bullcrap is that they had to destroy or work together to destroy. When you look at the surrounding area compared to how massive this thing is, look how small Cal looks in comparison to this mess. And no, we're not exaggerating when we say this thing is huge. Look at them working together, Marin messing up the debris so he can blast it at this thing to jam it up. Like you can see the angle 
on how big it looks. This thing is huge. These two working together with the force was able to mess this big thing up. Thing had to be the size of a building, maybe hundreds of thousands of tons. And these two alone's blast power was enough to jam something up like this, blow it up. You can even see the part where Khaled chopped up to show his cutting power and everything. These two accomplished this amazing feat together. Do you respect Kyle Kester's yet? This is straight up madness. So what do you think? Depending on which ship we're talking about, I definitely believe there's some that he could lift up. Something that Inquisitor level beings can do. I definitely believe he can lift up ships like this just because Seer can do similar things. You know, blah, blah, blah. Other Inquisitor level beings have done stuff like this as well with the Force. Maybe he can't lift a Star Destroyer up like Star Killer can or nothing, but we already know that Star Destroyers have to weigh over millions of tons or a million tons. But even if we assume he can't lift this, I definitely believe whatever Seer can do, Cal shouldn't be far behind when it comes to raw power output. She's also somebody that's Inquisitor level at least because Darth Vader himself even said she would have been a great Inquisitor. And when it comes to certain ships like this, even she can do this. So this is something I think Cal could do as well. So I think it's fair to say he can move or lift thousands of tons, right? That's fair, right? With his blast and stuff, how much he can lift, how much force he can output outwards. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. And you guys remember how Starkiller moved a million tons. Yeah, I'm not saying Cal Kestis can do this, for example, but they could be hinting towards something like this in the future games, maybe, if they want to upgrade him. Because it's mentioned. I would really like to take out a Star Destroyer one day. I would really like to take out a Star Destroyer one day. Will you join me? It's a date. I don't know about you guys, but that sounds like they're trying to pay homage to the man, the myth, the legend, Starkiller himself. Will they have him move a Star Destroyer like Starkiller in the next game? Who knows? I totally think this guy's going to end up being a great Jedi. This guy doesn't mind using lightsabers, Kylo Ren style sabers. Heck, something even Jedi looked the down upon. He's not afraid to use blasters. I don't know about you guys, but I think they're heavily implying that they're trying to eventually make him the new Star Killer when it comes to being able to use different type of force abilities. Because in this game, they hinted at it with embrace his darkness. I think we all remember a certain individual, you know, like Star Killer that can use force lightning because he used to be a Sith Lord in the Legends continuity when it comes to gaming. There's a realm of possibility the writers could be wanting to explore something new with Cal Kessis, making him maybe not even be a Jedi altogether, be like a gray Jedi. Night Sisters and Jedis being cool with each other. Like this is a totally different type of thing going on. Romance. Cal is definitely going down the path of the gray Jedi. I'm just saying. It's like the game purposely set it up to where they had Cal suffer so much, losing so many loved ones in one game. Who wouldn't pop in a situation like this? There's a multiple points in the game where they embrace the darkness. Like, he's definitely going to do something in the next game. Where are the writers going to go with this? I'm, I want to see them explore it. Something new and unique where you get to see it, like a character using the force and bully certain characters with rage. This is kind of entertaining. Only thing that will push him over the edge if they killed her off. It's a wrap then. Let me stop. No, please don't kill Marin. I like Marin. In the Star Wars universe, there's force wielders that use the force as blood power and then they use laser swords as well. But there's other force wielding beings in this universe, like the Knight Sisters from Dathomir who have mystic level beings that use mystic type stuff. But just like the Jedi, pretty much all of them almost went extinct, except this one known as Marin, the Knight Sister Marin that Kyle Kestis came across. Him and Marin ended up getting cool, even though they wasn't cool at first. This is clutch because thanks to her, she gives him some relic. That allows him to basically go through laser gates. I mean, this could be like a game mechanic because if he doesn't have this in the next game, we're going to know why. Part of me thinking it's a part of the narrative that she actually gave him equipment to help him be able to go through stuff like this. Mary basically giving him a charm that can go through stuff like that. That's handy. These green walls that he can apparently go through thanks to Marin's charm is an electron wall. I mean, I don't think this green shield junk is a game mechanic because Marion gave it to him in a cutscene, and that's something she would totally do because she's cool with him. So I think this was part of the narrative. Take this. Go through quickly. We'll protect you. Or he doesn't really need a lightsaber because he always has a weapon he can use. Telekinesis. Don't mind me. I'm just waiting for a live action Cal Kestis, but that's none of my business. We know it's going to happen. He's too popular. I mean, since the game is canon, we've technically seen him in canon meet Bubble Fett right like can you imagine that in the future if they want to just go over the top with his force ability and make him a great jedi make him way stronger than what we all would expect getting a major upgrade by embracing the dark side or something do you think it would kind of be epic to see him do something extremely epic like moving a star destroyer would be wild considering that it has to weigh over millions of tons that would be wild for somebody like him to do this in current games how strong do you think Kyle Kessis is with the Force? Do you guys think Marin will be playable in the next game? I surely hope so. But before I get going, 
I got to say thanks for the donations, everybody. Helps out a lot. Respect Kyle Kestis. I'm glad you are enjoying your time on the channel. Make sure you check out the playlist on the channel to see other How Strong videos. If you like what this channel is offering, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys later.